No, I was the only one my year who, who got into Yale. Yale was definitely my reach school. Um, I applied to, I think, Yale, Georgetown, Vanderbilt, um, Center College in Kentucky, and that may have been it. And then I got into Yale, and that was, that was my top choice. Yale was not necessarily my <laughs> reach school. Um, I was uh, recruited to row at Yale, although that was kind of like sports recruiting at Ivy League colleges is different than most places because they don't offer you scholarships and they don't really have any ability to get you into school. Um, sure. So I, my school doesn't send, I went to like an all guys Catholic school in Kentucky and they don't send a, a ton of people to the Ivy League. So it was, I think that's why it was probably a reach school. I don't think I felt out of place. Um, there's a like, it's diverse enough that you're going to meet people from sort of like all over the place. I don't think I realized that like boarding schools were a thing until I got to <laughs> Yale, but there are certainly more people from certain schools in certain geographic areas, but I didn't feel like that was uh, like a, that was an awkward thing or in any way made me feel less sort of welcomed. Yeah, I went to St. Paul's, which is a boarding school in New Hampshire that sends a lot of kids to all of the Ivy League schools. Um, and I went there because I lived in Texas and there was no good schools around where I lived. And so my mom was like, <coughs> you got to get out of here and go find a school that doesn't suck. Um, so we proceeded to bankrupt our family by sending me and my sister to boarding school. Um, but it was, it was an interesting experience coming actually to Yale uh, with a bunch of people I knew already. And in some ways I, I kind of wish that hadn't been the experience because it made it a little bit harder to like strike out in a new direction. <laughs> what do we major in? Yeah. <laughs> uh, history. Uh, philosophy. Um, so I personally, honestly, was not hugely satisfied with my kind of academic experience at Yale. Uh, with some perspective, I'm kind of comfortable realizing the extent to which that was my fault, maybe, for not taking advantage of all the opportunities I, I could have or should have. But uh, coming from a school environment in which there was a real focus on kind of small group learning and interacting with other students and the, the teachers were more like facilitators uh, the history department at Yale at least the courses I took largely didn't work that way I mean there were some seminars and the seminars were, were much better but it was also a lot of lectures with 200 people in them and you know I you will never convince me and <laughs> here at Harvard Law School you won't convince me that it is a good way to teach any subject to lecture at a bunch of people for three months and then give them an exam. It's just no one learns anything and it's a waste of time and money is kind of my opinion. <laughs> so, you know, I, I would have liked an experience that was a little bit more focused on like, hey, like let's actually like give some individual attention and try to try to make sure everything, everyone is learning things instead of let's try to make sure that you're ready for the final. I think I was fairly pleased with my experience in the philosophy department. Philosophy is weird just because it's such a broad field with such a like disparate sort of um, branches, and so I'm not sure how comprehensive like my studies were, but the classes I took I found pretty interesting. I like there were periodically gripes that it was difficult to get into seminars that grad students tended to take the spots, which I think is probably kind of true. Um, but I by and large enjoyed the classes and I also I felt like I learned as much or more from sort of like conversations with my classmates over lunch than I did like in the actual classroom environment. So an, an example like I lived in a house my junior and senior <laughs> year and my junior year there were seven people living there and all of us had a different major which I thought was sweet and so like there would periodically just be conversations about what someone was studying in their field or learning today that I wouldn't have gotten access to otherwise through like the things that I was studying. And you can see sort of overlap there and it's interesting hearing about what other people are sort of doing with their time. I, so I think that there was a lot of great inflation, but I think that there's so much great inflation everywhere. I, don't know, I, I know what my GPA was and my GPA was not great, um, but you know, my average was good enough that at most schools, I feel like it would have been like significantly higher in the kind of percentile of the class than, than it was. 
um, I know like my brother my brother went to Carleton and that school is like vicious like it is like no one gets you know no one walks out with like a three nine um, whereas at Yale I feel like a three nine was like not a huge accomplishment. <laughs> Um, I didn't get it. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I had to quote Dick Cheney no. other priorities at the time, but I don't know. I th there were just people that I would be in class with, and it was clear that they were just sort of like on a different wavelength. That that person was just way smarter than everyone else in the room. I so I remember like freshman year taking like a class on like we did. I did like a great works program where we'd had like a literature class and started with the Greeks, like work forward. And there was someone in that class who, like, I thought was just seeing connections that were brilliant. And that after they said them, I was like, oh, yeah, that's really insightful. But there's no way that I was going to see it. Or I think, like, anyone else in the class or even the professor was going to make. Secret societies? Um, okay. Secret. <laughs> yeah. They're not really that secret. No. <laughs> <laughs> so secret societies at Yale are something that, uh, like, seniors do. And it, um, basically, they get together twice a week normally and it, I think for most of them the idea is that it gives students from like different areas of campus and different circles a chance to sort of get to know each other if maybe they hadn't had that opportunity over the past three years. So a lot of it is about like talking about your life or like where you came from and a lot of them will have each person like give their little like life story. Some of them will like hang out and do like fun activities, but it's less like a social presence on campus more than like, and it's more like a, just a chance for different people to get to know each other. But, I mean, some of them have no idea what they do. <laughs> Overthrow their whole country. Yeah. <laughs> I do, like, just like general stories, uh, I don't know anything great. I do know any number of people have been arrested trying to break into Skull and Bones, though. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Skull and Bones is like the, at least kind of like old line, super like, kind of the, the pattern, uh, what's the other one, scroll and key? Scroll and key. Uh, are like kind of the, the most elite, if you will, of the secret societies. Um, I, you know, I don't really know what they get up to. <laughs> uh, but I think that, the, you know, the presence of the tombs on campus, I think, is a draw for people to try to figure out what goes on inside of them. <laughs> oh, what would I have done differently? I mean, <laughs> how much film you have in your digital camera, <laughs> you know? Uh, <clears throat> You know, I, I honestly, I came out of high school with, in some ways, kind of a chip on my shoulder, and in some ways, just feeling like I didn't have anything to prove anymore. And I, the courses I was taking didn't interest me, and unlike Mike, I largely, you know, I didn't go to a lot of my classes because I didn't care for what I was doing. Um, and I got really involved, you know, I was, excuses, you know, everyone has 150,000 of them, um, but I was just, I was more focused on my extracurriculars and you know I may have been dating somebody and I spent a lot of time kind of doing relationship things uh, but I think largely it just it made school seem kind of silly and pointless to me um, I just feel like I had other things going on in my life that were more important and you know chasing grades wasn't wasn't one of them um, again you know looking back on it there were certainly opportunities mainly to learn from like particular people that I wish I'd taken more advantage of.